For today's journey, I'm going to show you how planking made a significant impact on my fitness journey. Thanks to planking, I experienced, and still do, several benefits such as improved strength, stability, and a slimmer stomach. Planking is like the bread and butter of most people's workouts, including mine. After all, it's a total body exercise that engages more than the core, but also the arms, chest, back, legs, and butt. Many of you may be wondering, does planking really result in better stability? Is it true that planking can boost your metabolism? Stay tuned until the end and I'll tell you my top plank variations that greatly contributed to my fitness success. Here's what happened when I began planking a year ago. Number 1. Greater Deep Ab Muscle Strength When the topic ab exercises come up, most people automatically think of exercises that strengthen the six-pack muscles, otherwise known as rectus abdominis. It's vital to learn that six-pack muscles are just one part of the abdominal muscles. Other major parts include the internal and external obliques and the deep transverse abdominis TVA. The primary reason the plank exercise is superior to some other ab exercises is that it requires the contraction of all four major abdominal muscle groups. And among those ab muscles, it's your TVA that gets the most work. The transverse abdominis is a deep muscle that flattens the abdominal wall. It also supports internal organs and stabilizes the lumbar spine, specifically during arm and leg movements. There are two natural ways to activate your transverse abdominis. First is by contracting your ab muscles without moving, as if you're bracing yourself to get punched in the stomach. Second is by contracting your ab muscles while attempting to pull your belly button toward your spine. Planking involves those two movements, thus effectively strengthening the often neglected deep ab muscle group. It isn't just your ab muscles that get positively affected. The same goes for your core strength too. Number 2. Improved Core Strength The core is like a groundwork muscle of the body and planking is a great way to strengthen it. Contrary to what some people believe, the core consists of more than just the abdominals. It also encompasses your obliques, spinal stabilizers, shoulder musculature, back musculature, and hip musculature. In short, a stabilized core leads to improved function of the legs and arms. Planks work out all muscles of the core. All those muscles must contract and work together to hold your body in place and maintain a proper form. Ultimately, it leads to enhanced core strength, which then improves your day-to-day -day life. Speaking of stability, another benefit I got from planking is having many more stable shoulders. More on that coming up. Number 3. Enhanced Isometric Strength the plank is a basic example of an isometric exercise, meaning it involves the contraction of muscles without movement. When planking, all the muscle groups involved contract and hold at a certain angle or position. Isometric movements like planks develop your strength. On the other hand, planks are less effective at muscle growth because the muscles aren't moving and aren't getting muscle damage associated with the exercise. However, planks can also stimulate the brain to recruit more muscle fibers for a given isometric action and can aid in developing muscle endurance. Lastly, planks have helped me in building strength and ability in my other muscles, such as my arms, shoulders, quads, hips, and glutes. Another benefit that comes with planking is number 4. Increased overall athletic performance. The muscular system works in sync. For instance, isolation exercises like bicep curls require recruiting and stabilizing the core muscles to isolate the targeted muscle group. The core is responsible for coordinating both the upper body and lower body. Everyday activities like walking require co coordinated arm and leg movements, two major muscle groups that are connected to the core. Walking might look simple, but if you consider all the muscles and joints necessary to perform this movement, you'd be surprised by how intricate and complex the process actually is. The good thing about planks is that, when done regularly, it also enhances one's athletic performance. In my case, I achieved better body awareness, coordination, and stability, all of which are essential variables in my athletic performance. Number 5. Greater Shoulder Stability The shoulder joint is the most flexible in the body. It has a remarkable range of motion that allows for all sorts of movements that make day-to-day -day life easier. But all that wide range of motion and movement also make the shoulder the least stable joint in the body. This makes it especially susceptible to injury and dislocation. One effective way to help boost the stability and strength of the shoulders is to do regular planks. Thanks to the isometric nature of planking, it engages and builds strength around the shoulder blade and the rotator cuff to keep those smaller muscles stable when when performing other exercises. This then improves the activation of shoulder muscles during exercise, ultimately reducing injury risk. Want to work on your posture next? Again, planking is the answer. Number 6. Improved Posture 
The key to maintaining a good posture while sitting and standing is having a strong core. I spend a huge chunk of my time sitting in front of the computer which led me to have a terrible posture. Then came planks that changed my life for the better. In a way, the correct plank form is what they consider an ideal posture. Notwithstanding the horizontal positioning of planking, it's practically the same thing. The plank exercise contracts your core, engages your lumbar spine and glutes, and pulls your shoulder blades down and in toward the spine. Imagine drawing a line from your ears to your shoulders, hips, knees, and ankles, and you'd most likely get a near-perfect straight line. With planking, your muscles and joints are trained to align your spine properly. In turn, it builds strength and improves posture whether you are sitting, standing, walking, or even running. Oh, and remember how I mentioned muscle growth and strength? Planks can give you those, but only by a small margin. When it comes to building the best physique, there's a whole new universe you should be exploring, but more on that in a little bit. Number 7. Increased Metabolism The plank is an exactly at the top of the list of exercises that promote metabolism. Dynamic movements like squat presses, mountain climbers, and burpees are typically your best buds. That said, performing planks regularly for months absolutely won't hurt your metabolism. In fact, doing so can give your metabolism a little push. What I do is simply focus on engaging all the major muscle groups in my body whenever I perform planks. I always engage my legs, squeeze my thighs and glutes along with keeping my core and trunk firm. You should master the standard plank first. Once you do, you should start adding dynamic planks to your routine to promote more muscle engagement and calorie burn. Having a faster metabolism is the goal of many. Meanwhile, others are more concerned about getting a slimmer tummy. If you're the latter, planking can also help you with that. Number 8. Flatter Stomach Many people think that ab exercises like planks are the key to sculpting a slender stomach. The thing is, abs exercises and planks alone may not lead to your dream svelte tummy. But that isn't to say that doing planks is useless. You can still see results, but not as drastic as you get with the right combination of exercises for targeting belly fat. Still, many plank challengers have reported good results from their planking journey. I can attest to this because I definitely got a flatter stomach by the end of the two-month mark of my daily plank challenge. Of course, I didn't suddenly get more defined abs or anything like that. There was a notable change, albeit not significant. Before you get started on your planking routine, you must first learn how to do a plank. Learning the correct and safe way of planking not only maximizes the benefit of this exercise, but also reduces the risk of injury. There are three parts to doing a proper plank. Number one, the first part is getting into the position. To start, press your palms firmly into the floor and press up from your foundation, widening your shoulder blades until they are as far apart as possible. Think of the back of your neck lifting toward the ceiling while keeping your neck lengthened forward. Remember not to look down and not to let your shoulders scrunch or shrug up toward your ears. Your arms should feel engaged, but still comfortable. Aside from your abs, your legs should feel a little burned too. If they don't, push back through your heels and push the balls of your feet into the floor. Engage your thighs and squeeze your butt muscles together to activate your lower body muscles. Additionally, keep your booty nice and low during a plank, not lifted toward the ceiling. Your body should look like a straight line, not a triangle. Number 2. The second part is the breathing process. Although it's important to concentrate on the right form, don't neglect proper breathing either as lack of oxygen can cause dizziness or nausea. Remember to inhale and exhale rhythmically throughout your plank. If you're new to working out, consider holding a plank for 5 breaths in and 5 breaths out before releasing. Number 3. And the third and last part is proper alignment. One way to ensure a proper plank alignment is to imagine yourself balancing a glass of water on your lower back without collapsing your back along the way. If you're just a beginner, hold a plank for as long as you can do it correctly and stay in this position. If that's 10 seconds, that's totally okay. You can just work your way up to a minute or more little by little. There's no point doing long duration planks if you're just compromising your safety in the process. Because you've stayed with me until this part of the video, let me tell you about my top plank modifications. To modify a plank, do the following. Number 1. Knee Plank Beginner Level Lay on the floor with your elbows under your shoulders, hands hands flat on the floor and core engaged. Keeping your forearms and knees on the floor, slowly lift yourself until your body forms a straight line from your knees to your head. Hold the position for as long as you can. If your abs muscles start shaking, good, because this is a sign that you're working your abs. Number 2. Side Plank Intermediate to Advanced Level Lay on your right side with feet together and forearm beneath your shoulder. Engage your core and raise your hips so your body forms a straight line from your feet to your head. Hold this position for as long as you can. Repeat on your left 
side. Number three, knee to elbow plank, advanced level. Start in a plank position with hands shoulder width apart on the floor. Engage your ab muscles and keep your spine straight. Lift your right foot towards your right elbow. Return the right foot to the full plank position. Repeat with the left side, moving your left foot towards your left elbow. My favorite variation is the side plank. I like that it straddles between the intermediate and advanced level. What about you? Comment your answer below. Planking offers plenty of benefits. It's like the jack of all trades yet a master of none. But if we're talking about getting ripped and building a top 1% physique, then you've barely even scratched the surface. Trust me, there's so much more you must know and you should start educating yourself by watching this next video.